So today I'm going to be talking about designing to laser cut or creating designs that you want to laser cut. Um, the first step, I guess, is getting a vector program and the main two are Adobe Illustrator or the open source version, I guess, would be Inkscape, which a few people might have. I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator and between the programs and even the versions of Illustrator, the buttons are going to be different and things are just going to be slightly different between the versions. However, hopefully you can infer what you need and apply it to your own program and to your designs. So let's get started. So if I load up Illustrator here and the first thing I do is open a new file and on here what you want to be working in is millimeters or centimeters I guess. Um, most laser cutters use the metric measurements. You'll be hard stretched to find one that works in inches. You definitely don't want to be in pixels because all your designs are going to be slightly off and you're not going to have the correct scale. The size doesn't matter too much. I guess you want it big enough to, um, to fit your design on, but small enough that it's less than the size of the laser bed you're going to be using. I often go with a nice 500 by 500. And there we go. It doesn't matter if it's CMYK colouring or RGB, that makes no difference. Just make sure it's in millimetres. So I'm just going to open this file here, which you may or may not be familiar with. It is the base of a Pi bow, which is a case for a case for the Raspberry Pi. And I'm just going to copy that into my workspace that I've created and we're going to work on it here. The reason I've chose this to work with is because it's got the three elements that I'm going to talk about and they are a normal cut where the laser cuts straight through and pops out pieces like all these dots and the entire piece. A kiss cut which is used on this little number zero here and that's where you use the laser Sort of like an etch, it doesn't go all the way through, but unlike an etch, it's only one line around. And then down here, we have some etching or engraving. And we're just going to talk about all three elements. So the cut is the simplest one. It's the area where the laser is going to cut straight through. And I guess you can work it out these black bits are all going to get cut out and then this edge bit is all going to get cut out. I guess the main thing to remember about this is your laser program is going to work on lines. So I don't know if you can see that but you can see the blue line there that follows the black curve. That's what your laser is going to be working on. So it doesn't matter if your line thickness is that thin or that thick it's going to cut the same, basically. Take that back down. Is that it? That's it. Cool. So yeah, your line thickness don't matter too much. I work on a smaller line thickness and it enables you to see better. But that's cutting, basically. Um, use your line tool to create something. Or use a shape tool or something like that or create some text. If you are creating text don't forget to outline it and what that's going to do is turn it from text into little blocks so you can see here I can no longer use my text tool on this. It's actually shapes that I can manipulate so just like that. But that's basically cutting. Pretty simple. Now this here is something I referred to as a kiss cut or probably referred to, referred to it as other things. But that is basically a cut. So you, your cut will go all the way around this line. However, it's not going to go all the way through. 
It's sort of like an engrave or an etch, but it'll take a lot less time. And it's great if you want to do a line drawing or like this is a number zero, if you turn it that way. But again, the same rules apply. Um, your line thickness doesn't matter and you just need to make a line and your laser will follow that. Probably the most complex part is etching. Now the difference is to etch something you need a contained shape. It doesn't matter what the shape is, so this M here, you could etch this M. If I flip that round so you've got a fill on there, you can see all this blue would be etched. Whereas if I did that, and then I actually make it a colour that you can see. Try that, there we go. You wouldn't be able to etch that because it is just lines. Even though it's got a line width, that don't matter. You can't etch that, it's just lines. Whereas this, you can see the lines actually describe a shape like that and that has puffed up my line thickness for some reason. So the thing to remember with etching is it's going to etch anything in the shape. The M's quite simple, you can see there it's going to etch everything in there, but what about this zero, or O I guess, not a zero? You're going to want it to etch this bit here, this like donut shape, and not the middle. So if I release that because I messed around with it earlier, what you've got here are two separate circles, so you want to combine them. So on Illustrator you do that by using your Pathfinder tool, and what that's going to do is take away this front circle from the back circle and basically make a donut that you can see through. And that's how you etch that sort of shape. If I show you on this, and if I do that, if you don't do it properly, you're just going to be etched, etching a full circle and you're not going to get the middle cut out. The same, the same sort of thing would apply to this sort of pirate. So you would remove the various bits from the back, that sort of thing, and you then you'd remove this and bits and pieces until you got the effect you wanted. So they're the basic three things that you're going to be cutting or etching on your laser. It's pretty simple stuff. I mean, just knowing about the lines and that sort of thing is really helpful. Now I'm just going to go over a few quick export settings. So the first thing you want to do is have all the different elements of your design in different colors. So you can see here, the kiss cut is in orange, this etching or engraving is in like a light blue and the rest is in black. That's because on your laser screen or your laser controller, it's gonna have a list of things defined by their color. So you're gonna have orange, black and blue and for each of those, you'll be able to tell it if it's a cut or an edge. And you'll also be able to tell it what power you want. And the black, the black lines are going to be a certain power that cuts entirely through the material you're using. The orange will be another power that does not fit, um, that does not cut through the material you're using, but simply just scores the top. And then this here will be an engrave setting with a power relevant to how deep you want your engraving. So putting things in different colors is quite important. If you don't do it at this stage, most laser softwares will let you do it in that software. However, it's, it's good to export it with the different colors. One other thing, if you've got cuts inside a larger cut, you're going to want to put all your inner cuts in a different color to this outer cut. So if I change that to yellow, red, if we go with red on that, and I'll explain why. 
Like I say, your laser's got a list of things and it's going to go through the different colours in order. What you don't want is this outside to be cut first, your, uh, your piece that you're lasering, then what might fall out of position on your laser and all your internal cuts might go a bit skew if. Not what you want. So anything that's inside another cut, it's always good practice to put it in a different colour. So when you're lasering it out, you might do your etching first, then this kiss cut, then your black cut, and then finally the red cut. And nothing's going to fall, nothing's going to dislodge or move place, and it's all going to be as you want. I'm just going to go up here to File, and if we go down to Export, we get these options. <clears throat> now, nine times out of ten, you're going to want to export as a DXF. Some lasers take in different files. I've seen a few that will actually take Adobe Illustrator files, um, PLTs. I've once used WMF, but nine times out of ten, it's DXF, and that's a universal format. You're going to want to name your project. and click export. Now in Illustrator, this is the difficult settings. And actually this is the first time I've exported on this new Illustrator, so it's gave me the default ones. If you export like this, on all the lasers I've used, you're gonna have problems. So first thing, you're gonna wanna switch this up to R13LT95, which is one of the older settings. You wanna leave all this the same, see so scale exactly the same. I like to switch this down to A and change this to JPEG. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I've always done it and it's always worked. Down here, I never outline my text because if I want the text to be cut out, I uh, outlined it in the program like I showed you earlier. I don't click all the paths for appearance. In this case, I'm not going to um, export selected art only. I want the entire workboard exported. I'm going to leave maximum editability turned on and I'm going to leave preserve appearance unchecked. <clears throat> I'm just going to click OK. Some of those settings, you might find that other settings work for you. They've always worked for me. So if I open up that file I've just exported and I leave it at its original size, you can see everything there is exactly the same. And that's all you need to know about laser cutting, or at least getting your file ready for laser cutting. Hope this has been useful. As I say, even the different versions of Illustrator will have buttons in different places, but hopefully you can take the information that you need and apply it to whatever programs you're using. Thanks a lot for watching and let's see what you come up with.